Welcome to Essential 123 QuickBooks Tutorials. My name is Jamie Hudson. I'm a certified QuickBooks Advanced Pro Advisor and owner of Essential123.com. We hope you enjoy today's tutorial and visit us at Essential123.com often as we do update our tutorials regularly. Thank you. For today's lesson, I'd like to highlight an error that I've seen recently at a couple of clients' offices that deal with inventory and their vendors requiring them to put down a deposit on their inventory before they are being sent their product. This is very common if you're new in business or you've, you have a new vendor that is making your product that you are selling. So the correct way to do this involves a little bit of items that we need to set up. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to the list menu in the gray menu bar and go to our chart of accounts. And then we're going to go down to the very bottom left hand side and click that account button and say new. We're going to create an other account type that is an other current asset. We want to select other current asset and then continue. We're going to call this deposits on inventory. You can also call it something like prepaid inventory, prepaid expenses. Some people just call it deposits. And we're going to say save and close. And when we pull up our balance sheet, we'll be able to see deposits on inventory and if it has a balance in it or not. And we can see that here on our chart of accounts. And a lot of customers will just leave it at that item and use the uh, item on the chart of accounts. But I like to actually set up an item on your items list. So let's go to list and item list. And the reason we do this is because we can pull up so many more different reports based on items than we can with just our chart of accounts. So we're going to click item in the lower left hand side and we're going to say new. I usually set it up as an other charge. You can also set it up as something like a service. So we're going to say deposit on inventory. We want to make sure that we select that it's non-taxable. And we're going to go ahead and leave the amount blank because it may vary depending on what your requirements are with your vendors. Some it's a percentage, some it's a flat rate, so we're just going to leave that amount zero. Then the account we're going to choose on our chart of accounts is that deposits on inventory account. So we can go ahead and say OK. And there it is on our items list. Now I'm going to go back to the home page here and review on our home page our workflow when we have inventory. We're going to create a purchase order. And I'm not going to go over creating purchase orders, that's in another tutorial. So after we create our purchase order, that's usually when we're going to be sending the information to our vendor and they're going to be requiring a deposit. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go down to write checks in the right hand side. And in our case, um, we are going to go to Hamby Distributors. And it's going to ask us about existing purchase orders if they're already in there. We want to say no. We're not going to apply it. Um, and if we are, already have bills in the system, we're not even going to worry about that. We're just going to go to writing a check for our deposit. In this case, Hamby Distributors is asking us for a $1,000 deposit for our inventory. So we want to actually click on that items tab and choose our deposits on inventory. And we're just going to put in $1,000 there is what we're going to choose. And we can move our columns out here so you can see that a little bit better. Our $1,000 deposit. So we can say save and close. And if we go back to our chart of accounts, we can see now we have $1,000 in our deposits. So we've sent our purchase order out. We've sent our deposit check. They've made our product that we are reselling. Now we're going to go back to our home page and our next item in our inventory workflow is receiving our inventory. So when we click on that little blue carrot we get two options with a bill or without a bill. Usually you're going to have the bill when you receive the inventory. So that's what we're going to select. We're going to say Hamby Distributors. And this time yes, we're going to say yes to the we want to apply it to an existing purchase order. So we have our open purchase order here and now this is all of the items that we've gotten in and this is not the total that's due because we did put down that deposit so we're gonna say deposits on inventory and this time instead of saying 1000 we're just gonna say minus 1000 so that changes the total here and the total here we can put in our reference number for our bill 
and then we can see. So we're receiving each of our inventory items in at the price specified by the vendor. So we're not messing with the average cost that QuickBooks uses. We're not changing the prices here to show that we only owe $2,087. And we're showing that deposits on inventory. So once we say save and close, go back to our chart of accounts there and you can see that deposit on inventory is back again at zero. So we've received our items, we've shown a deposit and a credit against that deposit for our inventory. And that's the best way to show our deposits. Thank you for watching. We hope you found our tutorial useful and informative. Your feedback and comments are welcome. Please send us a note to the email address that you see on your screen. And just to let you know, we do offer live seminars, remote login assistance, video conference, group training, one-on-one -on -one instruction, and so much more. For more information about these services, visit Essential123.com. Thank you.